Thank you very much, Anil, for this opportunity, and good morning to all of you. So I'm honored to be here for the second year. So I'm from Scribe Security, as you can see. Uh, so we are a phase two company uh, working uh, uh, with the uh, DHS and SVIP. Uh, and to talk about a, uh, really a topic that I'm passionate for many years, topic of security and digital trust. So we all know that the world runs on software and machine learning or AI, but which is also a kind of a software. So in this case, this is a complex ecosystem that is highly interconnected. And in recent years, we have seen attackers really shifted to the left in, in, in order to compromise the upstream of the components, a lot of opportunities and high impact risk out there. So events like uh, SolarWinds, Log4j that was mentioned here, and of course the recent one that was a month and a half ago was about a library that nobody knew about uh, called Exit Library, is a compression library that was uh, uh, probably was uh, use of uh, advanced persistent threats compromise effort to be uh, aimed to uh, be deployed to a wide distribution of the Linux. So it would have been impacted for all of us. So, so as, as you can see, software supply chain security is really an issue for the government and the private sector. What we are doing in Stripe Security, we developed a SaaS platform that uh, covers you from an end-to-end -end perspective, uh, uniquely implementing evidence-driven approach to um, do basically three things. First of all, gain full visibility of what is running, what is happening, what are the full components, uh, mainly on the S-bombs, but uh, not only S-bombs, I will speak about it later. Uh, mitigate the risks and continuously validate the process for the security and trust of all your line of uh, products. We have successful, successfully delivered phase one, moving to phase two, and we are already uh, selected by uh, leading customers to deploy our uh, platform. Let's see a short clip of the platform first. I think it's okay. So the leading use cases that we're talking about is uh, managing risks, could be internally managing risks and governance, but also external requirements coming for compliance and customer requirements to more transparency. What we are doing, we are first of all doing, we identify your SDLC assets, uh, collect and sign evidence continuously from the process, turn them into a kind of a knowledge graph to reflect the risk and eventually take actions by a means of policy as a code that we implement as a kind of a control plane automated and validated on this data. The uniqueness of Scribe is we are product aware, we are managing everything aligned to product lines, uh, full evidence of not just your pipeline, but also third parties, components that are involved in the process of your software factory. We have BI analytics to analyze the data for you and we produce the security attestation uh, uh, collection and management and run uh, full uh, policy as code components based on it. So this is a short brief. Later on, you can come to see uh, how we do it uh, later. So if we look at the Scribe solution at, a, at an overview, overview, overview uh, look, uh, on the right side is the Software Trust Hub where we manage everything. This is a collaborative platform that shares these attestations, insights, inputs, and uh, with internally auditors or even your customers. And again, we collect continuously from the pipelines with our tools uh, that deploy to the pipelines, integrate with them, collect observability, sign attestations, creating and analyzing SBOM in context, and eventually analyze and enable you to create more governance and compliance uh, continuously. Uh, in phase two, what we plan to do, first of all, on the technology side, we are part of the contribution uh, group uh, to what Anil mentioned, the Protobomb and the foundational open source library. We are uh, evolving and maturing our automation of SBOM and visualization capabilities. And we are going to we plan to enhance our capability of scale, use cases, deployment, and the control plane that is planned to be uh, fully deployed on our platform to validate at scale. Just uh, to recap what we are doing. So on the right side, you can see the business value or the end results that we are aiming to ensure the SDLC security continuously, 
the, and also the integrity and trust by uh, signed attestations, uh, centralized insights and metrics aligned to the leading frameworks, but you can customize it uh, uh, in uh, unique uh, use cases, and automated policy that you can control, validate on an automated manner, because this is at scale. If you manage hundreds of pipelines on a daily basis, uh, deliver uh, features and productions, you need to have automated uh, validations. Thank you very much. I'll be happy to take your questions or prompts, the way you phrase it uh, these days. And uh, I invite you to visit later on our booth there. And uh, thank you. Can you talk a little bit about how um, the product understands the software, uh, analyzes it, and, and in addition to that, the policy? Is there something below the hood there from a product standpoint that would be interesting to describe? Yes. So what we're doing, we are collecting, first of all, we're starting by analyzing, the, of course, the S-bombs in several places, several steps before production, pre-build and after-build. We also analyzed the tools that created this, uh, this um, uh, artifact. We manage the records of the truth of uh, every version is recorded. And then we can see the full visibility of the product. Now, what we are building also is a kind of a hierarchy of product tree. So imagine that you have an S-bomb of S-bombs, because in many cases you have uh, an application or a service that contains of uh, microservices. Each one of them has its own S-bombs and you need to manage it in a product aspect. So we are managing the product tree for the customer to have the centralized view. In the product tree, you can see all the stakeholders that are working on the same group will get any kind of notifications, alerts, or risk metrics. Uh, and you have, again, uh, lines of uh, product trees that you can manage continuously. Hope it. Uh, So when we're talking about policy that your customers may want, some of them are pretty straightforward, right? No known severe vulnerabilities. Uh, can you talk about sort of a, a non-obvious policy that you either you've come across or some of your customers have asked about? Yeah, for example, you want to validate Git policies for you don't allow any kind of uh, non-signed commits to be deployed to a final artifact. You want to validate that there is like a code reviewer with a strong authentication. You want to validate the encryption keys that are valid and not going to be uh, uh, deprecated, the encryption keys of uh, signing the software. So this kind of metrics, when you probe the system, you can get this data, you sign it as artifacts as a proof of work and, uh, and posture of the system that build it. Another example is when you run build, um, uh, build runners after you uh, kick off a build, you want to validate the posture of the build itself. The build machines runs, could be running on uh, compromised systems. So you want to uh, validate the configuration of the build machines as an attestation, and it's part of the, part of the story that it was, it was created in a trusted environment. Okay. You, you talked about the zero trust. Yes. Okay, so are you checking the integrity of the algorithm, or what, what's the linkage between zero trust with what your software is doing? It's a great question. So, uh, of course, we kind of extended the concept of zero trust that we all know from the networking and identities to the manner that we, we don't trust any assumptions. We trust only validated data, signed data, or attestations, and we do it uh, continuously. So then we can have, first of all, the proof of what happened. By the way, also retroactive. So, for example, if a new vulnerability is happening or something happens, and you want to kind of have the forensics what happened six months ago for this version that is on production, you have the full visibility of, uh, of the data. Uh, this is like a post-mortem. And uh, before, uh, in order to protect, we are defining a policy based on this evidence. So for every build, you get the full signed evidence, for example, that the build happened on the trusted machine, uh, code signing and multiple validations. Otherwise, we can stop a build. We will not allow it. We have automated gateways that can stop a build. This is the control page that we are building to validate this zero trust approach. Good. Just a quick follow on on that. So are you saying your code write on Python? Is that what I heard? Or what's, what's your baseline? What's your code reading on? 
We are supporting, uh, we're almost agnostic to kind of uh, okay, the languages. So we're supporting multiple languages. We okay. have integrations with all of the leading systems in the, in the um, market, like uh, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, Jenkins, whatever. All, we have plugins and integrations already. And of course, we are extending it a long time. Uh, the coverage and uh, specifically we implement a lot with uh, Go and Java on our, our system but uh, and we have we are also deploying our SBOM so we when we uh, want to demonstrate to the customer we are showing our SBOM uh, to, to the customer in order to gain trust continuously to do business thank you thank you everyone and for the great questions as well thank you thank you very much <laughs>